Donc, je prends euh, la main pour euh, présenter euh, M. Ali Misdar, le professeur à, à la faculté de sciences Smalalia. Euh, il est largement connu, je ne vais pas le présenter, c'est un grand renommé en physique nucléaire. Et donc, il va nous présenter euh, Nuclear Radiation and their impact in the health of individuals. individuals. C'est une expérience de 40 ans avoisinant de, de, de travail. Yes, yes, you're right. Okay, so I will be glad to hear about uh, nuclear medicine and, this, uh, and, and his, uh, its applications in the medical uh, sectors. So thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for having invited me to participate into this uh, important event. My presentation uh, concerns the uh, impact of nuclear radiations on the health of individuals. But before talking about the effects of these radiations on the human body, uh, let me uh, talk about the origin of these radiations. So, as everybody knows, uh, the universe is formed by billions of galaxies. And these galaxies are formed by planets and stars, like our solar system, which is constituted by the sun as a, a star, uh, surrounded by different planets, like the planet Earth. Indeed, uh, planets are formed by atoms and molecules. And uh, the atom is formed by a nucleus and surrounded by electrons. The nucleus itself is formed by protons and neutrons. And neutrons and protons are uh, themselves formed by small particles uh, called quarks. But the cohesion of all these entities is assured by the existence of four fundamental interactions of forces. The universal attraction, that means the gravitational uh, force, and the electromagnetic uh, interaction the strong nuclear interaction and the weak inter uh, nuclear interaction. Indeed, the universe, uh, the cohesion of the universe is due to a balance between the universal extension of the universe with the uh, universal attraction. The cohesion of uh, an atom is due to the electromagnetic interaction between electrons uh, with a negative charge and uh, the nucleus with a positive charge. The uh, nucleons or protons and neutrons uh, are bring together inside the uh, nuclei uh, due to this nuclear force, which is attractive. According to the uh, equivalence between mass and energy, E equals M times C22, uh, one can determine the mass uh, of the electron at rest. It is equals to about 0 0.511 mega electron volt, MeV. The mass of the proton at rest is about uh, three, uh, 938 MeV. And the mass of the neutron at rest is about 300 and, uh, 939 MeV. If we compare the, uh, the mass energy of the electron uh, uh, to the, uh, those of the proton and neutrons, one can conclude that all the mass of the matter is concentrated inside the uh, uh, nucleus. Uh, there are some uh, 
regionuclides, natural regionuclides. Uh, I, we show here on this slide the, re, uh, the disintegration scheme of the uh, uranium-238 family. Uh, here we show the disintegration scheme of the thorium family. There are also uh, artificial radionuclides which are fabricated by using nuclear reactors or accelerators like cyclotrons. Uh, for example, iodine-131, uh, which is used in nuclear medicine for thyroid gland uh, disease, uh, technetium-99, uh, uh, metastable, uh, utilized in scintigraphy, uh, the fluorine-18 used in uh, tomography with the emission of positrons, and others, uh, uh, alpha emitters, which are utilized in alpha radioimmunotherapy or, or targeted therapy. All these natural or artificial uh, radionuclides disintegrate uh, via different processes. Some of them uh, disintegrate by emitting beta minus disintegration, uh, in which a neutron is transformed, a neutron is transformed into a proton with the emission of an electron, which is called in nuclear physics uh, uh, beta minus, with the emission of another particle uh, called antineutrino. An example is given here for the carbon-14, which disintegrate by emitting beta minus uh, to get nitrogen-14. Other radionuclides disintegrate by beta plus uh, disintegration. Uh, in these processes, a proton is transformed into a neutron uh, by, uh, with the emission of a beta plus and a neutrino. Uh, an example is given here for fluorine uh, 18, which disintegrates by emitting uh, beta plus and uh, oxygen to give oxygen 18. Some uh, radionuclides disintegrate by emitting uh, alpha particles like uh, this, this example here, uh, in which radon. Uh, uh, radium 226 disintegrate to, get, to give radon plus alpha particles. Some excited uh, nuclei uh, disintegrate by uh, emitting gamma photons, like this example here. Some radionuclides are called fissile uh, nuclei, like uranium-235. When it captures a thermal neutron, it gives uranium-236, which disintegrates by giving a fission fragment plus uh, the emission of other neutrons. These neutrons can produce new uh, uh, reaction, fission reaction. Uh, which is called the chain uh, reaction. The energy released from the fission of, uh, as an example, to get an idea about the energy, uh, uh, this energy is about uh, 202 MeV. When uh, a uranium-235 uh, captures a neutron, a thermal neutron, this energy is utilized for the production of uh, energy, electricity. As it's well known, uran natural uranium uh, is formed by three isotopes, uranium-238 uh, at 99.27%, uh, uranium-235 at 0.72%, and uranium-235 at 0.0056%. Uh, for the production of radioisotope in nuclear medicine, one should enrich uranium uh, 235 to uh, 3%. If uh, uh, we uh, uh, want 
want to produce weapons, nuclear weapons, uh, one should uh, enrich uranium-235 to 90%. But uh, we talk uh, presently uh, uh, about depleted uranium. Depleted uranium is utilized for the production of ammunition, uh, radioactive ammunition, in which uranium-238 is at 99.7 to 99.8, and uranium-235 is at 0.2 uh, to 0.3%. The energy uh, resulting uh, as particles, emitted particles, from all these processes can be exploited for uh, different purposes. For detecting radiation, nuclear radiation, uh, to uh, uh, technology, the, the technology of detectors, uh, which is utilized in different branch of science and in medicine. Uh, for studying the effect of nuclear radiation on the human body, for therapeutic and diagnostic purposes, and for fabricating semiconductor materials. Also, for the analysis of uh, rocks in geology, soils, metals, liquids, etc. And for radio protection, and as I said, for the production of electricity. Uh, we exploit the energy uh, collected from the disintegration of radionuclei, uh, to uh, these uh, branches. Indeed, in our laboratory, we developed uh, three new uh, methods uh, which are based on the formalism of the energy loss of alpha particles inside different media for evaluating uh, uranium-238, thorium-232, radon and thorium inside different liquid and solid material samples like for uh, geologists, uh, rocks, soils, water, foodstuff, plants, phosphate, tobacco, medical drugs, etc., etc. We can determine with uh, an important precision uh, the uh, contents of all these radioisotopes in our laboratory here at the Faculty of Sciences Similaria. Here uh, we show the disintegration scheme of the uranium-238 uh, series. Uh, one can note that there are eight alpha-emitting nuclei uh, in this chain. Here we show the disintegration scheme of the thorium-232 uh, uh, series. Uh, one can note that there are seven alpha particles, which are emitted with different energies. Indeed, we developed uh, the uh, probability method for the analysis of uranium, thorium, radon, and thorium. We developed also the mean critical angle of etching method, uh, we published in international journals, and we developed the detection efficiency method. And we got the same results with uh, all these uh, methods compared to the existing instrumental methods. All these methods consist of placing uh, uh, the material sample to be analyzed inside uh, well-closed uh, plastic containers uh, in direct contact with uh, two detectors. Uh, which are called solid state nuclear track detectors during uh, an exposure time of 30 days. During this uh, exposure time, alpha particles emitted by the uranium tori and thorium series, uh, that means 15, 15 alpha emitting nuclei, uh, bombarded the fins and uh, to uh, determine the number of tracks uh, inside uh, the utilized uh, detectors, uh, these detectors are uh, etched or developed in these uh, NaOH uh, solutions at these optimal conditions, ensuring good reproducibility of our method and good sensitivity of our detectors. 
after the exposure, uh, after the, the development, the uh, tracks uh, registered on the, uh, the, the detectors utilized are determined by means of a, an optical uh, microscope. We developed also uh, three new methods for measuring the concentration of radon, toron, and their decay products inside different atmospheres. Uh, here we show the arrangement of the, the, our detectors inside a room. The exposure uh, time uh, varies between three hours to uh, 24 hours. During the exposure time, alpha particles emitted by the radon and toron gases uh, bombarded the films and after development in the same uh, NaOH uh, solutions, uh, one can determine the tracks, track density registered on these detectors. Uh, here we show the arrangement of our detectors in uh, the outdoor, uh, in the outdoor air. According to uh, the method uh, called the detection efficiency method, uh, and according to this formalism we developed, one can determine uh, by measuring track densities registered on the uh, detectors reutilized, one can determine the uh, concentration of uranium and thorium inside liquids and solid material samples. Here uh, are, is the formalism for determining the concentration of the gas radon and toron inside uh, liquids and solid uh, material samples. Here uh, is presented the formalism we proposed for the determination of the concentration of radon, toron, and their progenies in indoor and outdoor atmospheres. It's important to know how uh, radionuclides are introduced in the human body. Indeed, they, are, uh, they can uh, be incorporated inside the human body through the ingestion of water, foodstuffs, medical drugs, etc. Uh, through the inhalation of air, through the deposition of different materials on the skin of uh, individuals, and uh, through the plate out of the radon, toron, and uh, progenies on the uh, uh, cornea of the eye. When we open our eyes, uh, these radionuclides, which uh, exist in every atmosphere, uh, are deposited on the cornea of the human eye and can penetrate inside the different uh, uh, compartments of the eye until uh, arrive to the uh, lens, the sensitive lens. And we talk about uh, these. So, uh, in order to uh, study the uh, impact or, or effects of nuclear radiations on uh, the health of individuals, uh, we developed new methods for internal dosimetry for radiation dose to the respiratory tract from the inhalation of air uh, due to alpha particles emitted by the short-lived radon decay, uh, decay products uh, such as polonium-218 and polonium-214 for determining radiation dose to the gastrointestinal uh, from the ingestion, uh, the gastrointestinal system from the uh, ingestion of various materials due to alpha particles emitted by the uranium and thorium series. We also developed new methods for external, for, for external dosimetry uh, in order to determine radiation doses to the human skin from the application of various products, such as medical drugs, uh, cutaneous application of medical drugs, uh, uh, to determine radiation doses to the human eyes, as I said before, 
from the plate out of uh, radon, toron, and their progeny present in ambient air uh, on the cornea tissue of the human eyes. So, according to uh, the dosimetric method for ingestion, the committed equivalent dose due to uranium in a tissue T is given by this formula. Uh, DSP here is given by this formula, and the alpha equivalent dose rate is given by this formula we proposed. Uh, one can note that the existence of the activity, uh, the activity of uranium inside each tissue and the mass of the tissue, that uh, make our method personalized to each individual according to it, the mass and the uh, activity uh, ingestion from the ingestion of uh, foodstuff or water uh, compared to the uh, method developed by the International Commission on Radiological Protection uh, in which they consider uh, all individuals and patients uh, represented by one standard person called phantom, uh, which uh, is far from the morphology of each uh, patient, for instance, in medicine. Uh, for us, uh, here we show uh, the uh, committed equivalent dose due to thorium. And here the activity due to uranium at time T, uh, uh, we see here the, uh, this IU. IU represents the incorporation or intake, the uranium intake from the ingestion of a uh, foodstuff or, or fish, for instance. Okay. Uh, here is the uh, activity of the deuterium in a compartment uh, uh, N of the gastrointestinal uh, system. For radon, we propose the, these relationships to get the committed equivalent dose. Radon is a gas. Huh? Yeah. So we applied this uh, method uh, for determining radiation doses. Uh, to individuals from the ingestion of water. Uh, in different uh, papers we published foodstuffs, medical drugs, green tea preparations, sweet drinks, radio iodine, etc. Uh, due to the short time I got, uh, I will just talk about some applications we published, recently published. For instance, uh, we determined the uh, radiation doses to consumers from the uh, ingestion of olive uh, oil. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, radioisotopes uh, uh, are transferred from soil and rocks via water to the olive tree and to the olive fruit, and then to olive oil and to the consumers. Here we show data obtained for a census we took uh, about the consumption of olive oil by some adult members of the Moroccan rural uh, population. Uh, here uh, we, you, you get the intake mass in liter per year per person. Here the uh, uh, uranium, thorium, and radon intakes. Here we show the uh, data obtained for the uh, committed effective dose due to uranium, thorium, and radon obtained by our method and uh, those uh, obtained by the International uh, Commission on Radiological Protection and the United Nations Scientific uh, Commission. Uh, we used th that, the, their coefficient, but uh, for them, they use, they consider the human body uh, as a standard represented by a phantom. Uh, for us, uh, we take into account of the uh, morphology uh, and condition situation of each individual. Uh, and results, uh, there is uh, an agreement between uh, results obtained by both methods. 
here we show, we studied uh, the influence of pollution uh, on the uh, uh, radiation dose received by consumers uh, when they consume uh, some uh, polluted uh, olive oils uh, by adding the fertilizers, phosphate, cement uh, 35, marble dust, uh, uh, clay dust, etc. And uh, to, to determine the influence of pollution, we get a maximum value of 0.22 millisieverts per year, which is uh, uh, in, inside the interval of the mean world value for ingestion. Okay? That could represent a danger for the consumers if they uh, consume uh, polluted olive oil. Here another example concerning the radiation dose received by uh, consumers from the ingestion of honey. As you, uh, everybody knows, uh, uh, these radiations are uh, radionuclides are transferred from soil via water uh, to the stalk of plants and uh, to the flowers and to nectars and transferred by uh, bees to uh, honey and to the consumers. Uh, here we show results obtained for a uh, census we took about the consumption of honey. Here the different honey and the number of populations uh, concerned. Uh, the intake mass, the uh, intake of uranium in millibecquerel per year, uh, uranium, thorium, and radon. Here we show uh, data obtained for the uh, committed equivalent dose due to uranium and thorium obtained uh, from the ingestion of different honey samples uh, collected from different regions in Morocco, uh, obtained by our method, which is, I, as, as I said, uh, our method, uh, our methods are personalized to each individual and each situation, and uh, that obtained by the uh, International Commission on Radiological uh, Protection, with, uh, which is based on the concept of MIRD. Uh, that means Medical Internal Radiation Dose, uh, which uh, consists of uh, considering all individuals represented by a phantom. Here we show data obtained for radon in comparison with uh, with uh, our uh, method and uh, other uh, techniques. So, uh, we studied also the influence of uh, pollutants coming from uh, building material, uh, material factories, phosphate factories, and uh, we measured uh, uh, uranium, thorium, uh, this is the source of pollution, and here uh, we show uh, data obtained when we add two different honey samples, uh, uh, different pollutants. We found the maximum value of 0.27 millisievert per year, which is situated in the mean world values for ingestion. Uh, so, our advice to the consumers is to uh, avoid the consumption of polluted honey. Uh, and our advice to farmers is to place uh, their uh, beehives far from pollu pollution sources. So, uh, let me give you an example, a recent example we published in the uh, International Review called Health Physics Journal. Uh, it concerns the determination of radiation doses received by consumers from the ingestion of marine fish. Uh, here, uh, we analyze different uh, marine fish, fresh, fresh marine uh, fish, collected from different um, uh, fish markets in the city of Marrakesh. Uh, 
So here uh, we show data obtained for the uh, activity concentrations of uranium, thorium, radon, thorium inside the uh, analyzed uh, fish samples. Here uh, we show results obtained for canned fish, marine fish. We have chosen four uh, canned uh, fish, marine fish, and we analyzed them. Here we show in this table the results concerning the mass intake of population uh, when consuming different uh, fish, marine, marine fish sam uh, samples. Here we show the uranium intake, the thorium intake, and the radon intake. Uh, it's the, the same uh, for uh, canned, canned fish sample, but polluted by different uh, pollution. Uh, uh, from uh, when uh, building material workers uh, ate their uh, meals uh, without cleaning their hands, uh, they can uh, uh, absorb a, a big quantity of uh, uranium, thorium, radon, and thorium. So here we show data obtained for the uh, uh, effective dose due to uranium, thorium, radon obtained uh, from the ingestion of these different fresh marine fish samples obtained by our method and the uh, ICRP and NSCAR method. Uh, good re uh, good uh, the, the results are in good agreement uh, are were found in good agreement with each other. So, uh, as a conclusion from this study, for consumers in the city of Marrakesh, uh, consuming a popular menu composed of sardine, merlot, and sol de roche fish, the maximum value of, according to this study, uh, of the total committed effective dose due to uranium, thorium, and radon was uh, found equal to 8.5 microsievert per year, which is smaller than the mean world value uh, for ingestion of foodstuffs and water, ranging from uh, this uh, 0.52 to 0.8 microsieverts per year given by the uh, United Nations Scientific uh, Commission. But uh, even if this is smaller, is a smaller uh, dose, it can produce what we call determinist, uh, we, we call stochastic, stochastic effects. Uh, well, it, we, we shouldn't neglect uh, lower doses. It's well known that uh, uh, higher doses, uh, like in accidents, uh, the radiations uh, produce deterministic uh, effects, but uh, uh, the uh, stochastic effects are very dangerous and can induce, uh, in time, uh, some cancers, according to studies uh, done by specialists. So, let us give an order. Uh, all this uh, it was about the uh, radiation dose deposited by alpha particles emitted by the uranium and thorium series from the ingestion of different products. But we did also an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, work, a scientific work, which consists of determining the beta radiation dose to the thyroid gland from the ingestion of iodine-131 by patients. Uh, this is, is well known and was said by my colleague. So uh, when we, uh, a patient ingests iodine, uh, this iodine is transferred to blood and then to the thyroid gland. A part is transferred to urine. Uh, so each transfer is characterized by this uh, rate, transfer rate. For instance, lambda B uh, is the transfer ra uh, rate 
from blood to the thyroid. Okay? So, the uh, variation uh, or the activity, the change or rate of the activity of iodine 130 in blood, in the thyroid gland, in urine, and in feces uh, are given by these equations. So, to personalize uh, our mo uh, method, we uh, added to this, we added the uptake, iodine uptake, uh, which depend, uh, uh, and uh, we introduced the uh, half-life, biological half-life of blood, okay? And then for, blo for blood to, uh, from urine, uh, we introduced one minus the iodine uptake. Uh, the iodine uptake, uh, as all the nuclear uh, uh, medicine specialists know, uh, depend on the uh, uh, situation of the patient. Uh, here, uh, the, uh, mo the, the, the model we propose uh, for determining beta equivalent dose, uh, and uh, here we see the mass we introduced uh, the mass of the, the thyroid gland and the incorporated activity of iodine. Uh, for each patient, uh, it, uh, each patient ingests uh, some quantity of iodine. And uh, each patient has a uh, mass uh, of the thyroid gland. So, uh, the mass of the thyroid gland was determined by a means of a gamma camera in the nuclear medicine service of the Mohammed VI uh, University Hospital Center. So, here, in order to validate our method, we determined the, this dose coefficient uh, in thyroid, uh, by using our method and the ICRP dose coefficient, okay? Uh, for different uptake, 5%, 10%, 15%, etc. But in our study, we uh, determined the uh, committed equivalent dose due to uh, beta, beta committed equivalent dose, due to the ingestion of iodine by different patients in the uh, service, nuclear medicine service. Different patients with their ages and uh, the mass steroid for each patient. Uh, they, they are women uh, and the pathology according to the, the doctors and the uh, initial activity ingestion and the uptake the uptake, iodine uptake, was also determined by measurement from a gamma camera uh, and also the thyroid mass. And we got these values. And uh, to compare with some values which are close to, uh, for instance, here for an intake uptake 33 for patient number four, uh, the ICRP value give 35%, and we obtain uh, similar uh, value, 13 to and 14, uh, mainly sievert, uh, sievert. But uh, for us, we can did the uh, study for each case, uh, and uh, according to morphology uh, of each uh, patient which it cannot be done by using the ICRP uh, model. Here is a gamma camera of the thyroid obtained from the um, nuclear medicine service at the uh, Mohammed V, uh, the sixth uh, university center. So, let us talk now about our methods we developed for uh, in, uh, internal dosimetry, but from the, uh, due to the inhalation of air. Here, uh, we show again the uh, 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 disintegration scheme of uranium-238. Uh, 
uh, we are interested by this uh, part in which we show radon, we, which is a gas with a, a, a half-life of 3.8 days, uh, which disintegrate to give uh, uh, polonium-218 uh, and polonium-240, which are alpha emitters. Here we show the disintegration scheme of the uh, toron. Uh, toron. Toron is a gas which disintegrates uh, to give uh, some alpha emitters which uh, lose their energy inside the lung, uh, the respiratory tract of uh, humans. According to our methods, the uh, committed effective do uh, equivalent dose is given by this formula for polonium-218 uh, and polonium-14. Uh, we show here the mass of uh, the tissue inside the respiratory tract, okay, and the activity, we measured the activity of each uh, radioisotope, polonium-218 and polonium-240. So, the annual uh, effective dose uh, expressed in millisievert per year per hour of exposure due to uh, polonium-218 uh, and polonium-214 uh, to individual from the inhalation of air is given by this formula we proposed. Uh, indeed, uh, we utilized uh, this method for inhalation uh, for uh, determining radiation doses for two individuals from the inhalation inside uh, dwellings, workplaces, caves, mines, etc. Uh, we will, we, we are, I am going to uh, talk about some examples. For instance, we determine the radiation doses received by individuals inside caves. Uh, uh, some individuals are enter uh, inside caves uh, during summer and they receive from this uh, radon gas, uh, some dose. So, uh, here we uh, study the Orica cave, the Qatara, uh, etc. Here we show uh, results obtained uh, for, the, for the effective dose uh, per hour exposure uh, obtained for uh, different individu individuals, adult male, adult female, children, 10 years children, Okay, but uh, the ICRP model cannot distinguish between the different age groups. Okay, for that reason, we give for general public uh, these results, and for us, when we took the average value, these values in red color uh, are in good agreement with uh, each other. But uh, our method is capable to determine radiation doses received by each age group of individuals. Okay, the, according to this study, the maximum value was found equal to 1.11 uh, millisievert per year for the five years children visiting the Winter Medwin, which is uh, in the neighborhood of Agadir uh, cave, uh, in which they stay uh, three hours per week during the spring season. That means 36 uh, hours per year, which is smaller than the, this value uh, limit given by the United Nations Scientific Commission due to the inhalation of radon. But, as I said, uh, this small uh, quantity of radiation dose could uh, represents some danger uh, as uh, stochastic uh, effects on the uh, respiratory tract of individuals entering these caves. So the visiting uh, time to the caves and ancient mines must be short as, uh, as possible as to avoid any enhancement of radiation. Okay, uh, we studied, uh, we, we did a study uh, concerning the uh, effect of radiation uh, inhaled in 
site, the Mulayakub, and in Allah, thermal stations. As you know, uh, thermal waters are very rich in radon. It's well known. And uh, if you enter here, we show uh, the arrangements of our detectors inside the Mulayakub uh, thermal station. Here is the swimming pool, and uh, radon and all. Uh, migrate from water, thermal water, and uh, reach the, the, our detectors by emitting alpha particles. So we are able to measure the concentration of radon, toron, and their progenies inside uh, this uh, location, inside the thermal station of Mulayakub and La Odersmith. Here we show results obtained uh, for the concentration of radon Toron uh, inside the Mulayakub, uh, uh, in the swimming pool, in shower rooms, and in uh, swimming pool. Okay? Here we show uh, results obtained for the completed effective dose uh, per hour exposure obtained for uh, individuals uh, obtained by, the IC, by using the ICRP, uh, the uh, average and uh, our method for each, uh, each group of age, adult male, adult female, male uh, 15 year, uh, male, uh, female 15 year, children 10 year, child 5 year, and the average, which is compared in red color with the those obtained by the International Commission on Radiological Protection. Good agreement was found, but the ICRP model cannot determine for each the radiation dose for each uh, age group. So according to the study, the maximum value uh, of annual effective dose was found equal to 0.45 millisievert per year for the 10 years children bathing in the Mulayakob thermal station uh, during three hours per week. That means during uh, 156 hours per week, which is smaller than the, this limit of 1.15 uh, uh, millisievert per year. May, but as I said, this radiation, lower radiation dose uh, could uh, provoke some uh, cancer uh, as, as uh, stochastic effects. So, let me talk uh, now about uh, the, uh, the determination of radiation doses received by mechanic workers uh, in their repair shops. Uh, so, we measured the alpha and beta activities due to radon and torrency in petrol and gas, uh, uh, gas oil exhaust fumes by using this, uh, using this chamber in which we introduced, this is the exhaust pipe of, uh, of my car. Huh? We did this experiment uh, in the Faculty of Sciences. Uh, I bring my car and uh, I switch on and uh, we open the valve and we introduce the exhaust fuel, uh, diesel, it's a diesel, uh, an old diesel uh, car. And uh, we close after and uh, we already put our detectors. Uh, so during the exposure time, uh, alpha particles emitted by these bases, radon and toron, bombarded the pins, and uh, when measuring the tracks uh, density resisted on our detectors, we can uh, determine the concentration of radon, toron, and their progenies inside the uh, exhaust fuel. Uh, we did that for different uh, this is the formulation we propose for determining uh, the uh, activities of radon toron inside petrol and gas oil exhaust fumes. Here we show data obtained for the measurement of the concentration of radon toron and their progenies uh, in different exhaust uh, fumes uh, the, the, for different vehicles, the buses, uh, trucks, Cars, etc., etc. Okay, uh, petrol, super petrol, 
gas oil, uh, etc. So, according to uh, our method or inhalation, immediate effective dose is given by this formula for polonium 218 and polonium 214. Uh, as I said, uh, this method is personalized uh, to each, uh, each individual uh, by introducing here the mass of the tissue and the activity of polonium 218 and polonium 214. So the uh, annual committed effective dose is given by this formula we proposed. Here we show results obtained for the effective dose obtained for different uh, exhaust fuel uh, samples. According to this uh, study, uh, one can note that total committed, annual committed effective dose due to polonium-214 and polonium-218 increases when the exposure time uh, time, that means time spent by mechanic workers in a pit of a repair shop or vehicle, uh, increases. Mechanic workers must therefore spend less time in controlling vehicle engines in motion. And uh, a good airing is necessary to avoid any enhancement of exposure to radiation due to radon uh, and its progeny to reduce lung cancer risks. A maximum value of 1.35 was found for male mechanic working, uh, workers spending six hours per day. That means uh, 1,780, uh, 20 hours per year in repair shops and inhaling gas oil exhaust fuel, which is lower than the 3 uh, to 10 millisieverts per year uh, dose limit interval for work. But this uh, dose, th these doses still uh, represent a dangerous uh, risk of cancer for uh, mechanic workers. Let me talk now about uh, the symmetric model we developed for cutaneous application of different products on the skin, on the human skin. Uh, here, we show the different strata of the epidermis uh, deposed on the dermis. Uh, medical doctors know that. Uh, when a layer, when a layer here, when a layer of material is deposited on uh, the surface skin, uranium and thorium uh, and radon emit alpha particles. These alpha particles uh, can lose their energy inside uh, the basal layer which is sensitive for radiation and can cause uh, skin cancer. <coughs> so according to this uh, method for skin, the uh, committed effective dose uh, are given by these formalisms. Uh, we can see uh, here the apparition of the mass of skin uh, and density of skin, uh, etc., and the exposure time, Te, for uh, uranium, thorium, uh, and uh, radon. We applied this for uh, the application of uh, olive oil by uh, rural population. Here we show data obtained from uh, due to the application of different olive oil samples by rural women uh, due to uranium, thorium, and radon. And uh, we present in the last column the global uh, effective dose. Uh, according to this study, uh, the maximum value uh, was, uh, was found equal to uh, 73 plus minus five uh, microsievert per year per square centimeter of skin, uh, which is significantly smaller than the uh, 50 millisievert per year per centi uh, square uh, centimeter dose limit 
for the members of the public given by the International Commission on Radiological Protection. But uh, this doesn't mean that uh, these values, small values, can represent some risk of cancer uh, through uh, stochastic effects on the, the cells of the human cell, the, on the human skin. Now, let me talk about a new symmetric method for the position of radon and toron progeny on the human eyes, which we published recently. We have published recently. So, uh, in, if, if you are in a given atmosphere, in your uh, workplace or in home, in this uh, auditorium, uh, radon and toron are deposited on the cornea of, the, uh, of your eyes and can uh, uh, and lose there by emitting alpha particles. These alpha particles uh, uh, lose their energies in, inside the cornea. They cannot uh, go uh, after the cornea due to their uh, limited ranges. Okay, but uh, radon and toron are gases and they diffuse uh, through the different tissues of the eye and they can reach the lens, even the vitreous human. But they cannot reach the retina uh, due to their uh, diffusion length. Uh, fortunately, uh, because if they reach the retina, uh, no vision. Uh, okay, they are stopped in the vitreous human of the eye. So, uh, here we show the different strata, the different uh, tissues of the eye, uh, the ambient air layer, the tears, uh, because alpha particles cross the, a layer of tears, uh, uh, it's well known, the different, uh, the cornea, and uh, can reach the lens, uh, okay? So we propose this huge formula for determining the, uh, committed, the committed equivalent dose due to uh, polonium-218 uh, uh, and polonium-214. Uh, 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 and uh, their <coughs> parents. Here we show results obtained for the measurement of radon, toron, and their progenies inside different locations in the city of Marrakech and in different Moroccan cities. So here we show uh, results obtained for the same radioisotopes, but measured inside cafe rooms and uh, repair shops and marble factories, different uh, workplaces. We call them workplaces, uh, and uh, and we, in order to determine, uh, we measure your uh, radon toron and their progenies in order to determine the uh, committed effective dose uh, to the uh, the eye of uh, to the retina, uh, the the cornea, the cornea <coughs> uh, due to each uh, radioisotopes for the city of Marrakech and in different uh, cities in Morocco, Fez, Azro, etc. So, here we show, we studied also the effects of pollution. Uh, we measured the, uh, the, these, we determined these uh, radiation doses due to radon and uh, their progenies in cafe, different cafe rooms and repair shops polluted by cigarette smoke, uh, by uh, gas oil, and by uh, uh, marble dust. In order to study the effects of uh, here in the city of Marrakech. Okay. So, according to the study, a maximum value of committed equivalent dose to the eyes of individuals is due to alpha particles emitted by radon and toron series was found equal to this uh, value, 0 0.27 millisievert per year per uh, square centimeter, which is smaller than the 
15 millisievert dose limit given by ICR. But it still represents some danger uh, to the eye of individuals uh, uh, through uh, stochastic effects on the uh, cells of the eye. So, uh, since the mean total depth of cornea, uh, as I said, anterior chamber and lens is about 7.55 uh, millimeter, uh, according to this reference, which is clearly smaller than the 23 millimeter radian diffusion length in the eye tissue. So the cornea, anterior chamber, and sensitive crystalline <coughs> lens of the eye may receive some radiation doses. And uh, as you know, uh, it can produce cataract, uh, the, the, the cataract disease. So, uh, orders applications uh, for the, the application of different products. We uh, studied uh, the radiation dose deposited on the skin of buffers in Hammam uh, by using Moroccan black soap uh, sample. And we called them in an article uh, Sabon Bildi. Yes. Now, everybody in the world yes. uh, knows Sabon Bildi because in this, this publication, uh, uh, was uh, uh, surrounded all the world. Okay, the, it is the Moroccan black soap. So these are results obtained. Uh, we got a maximum value of uh, this, okay, which is smaller than the limit, but still represents a huge danger, uh, risk of cancer due to uh, we, because people forget. Uh, the uh, stochastic effects of radiation. Okay. So we use recently, ah, there is one of my students, we uh, published uh, recently uh, an article about the deposition of essential oils from plants. Okay, it's an article under uh, publication, under press. Uh, in conclusion, we developed new analytical methods uh, based on the energy loss of nuclear radiation for measuring uranium, thorium, radon, and thorium concentrations in different media, including uh, the air. We also developed new dosimetric methods based on the energy loss of nuclear radiation for evaluating radiation to the human tissue and organs uh, following the ingestion and application of various material samples and the inhalation of air. We also developed uh, the new dosimetric methods for determining alpha and beta radiation doses to the human skin and human eyes. Uh, here I show some, some references, uh, recent references, okay? Thank you very much for your attention. If there is any questions. Thank you, Thank you uh, very much, uh, <coughs> Monsieur uh, Professor Alvista, uh, for your uh, presentation. Very interesting. Is si vous avez des questions? This is the other one. Uh, firstly, I will, I will uh, thank uh, the committee organization of uh, the first international conference on the medical engineering and also the, the Marco Societe uh, of uh, Biomedical Engineering. And the second, I will thank uh, Professor Moulay Ali Mustaq, uh, the University of Qadi uh, Ayyad University, for the interesting pre presentation. And uh, we have uh, presented uh, uh, many real application research of uh, the uh, of uh, impact on the health uh, of uh, individual. Uh, the statistic uh, effect. And my question is uh, focus for the solution. What does the solution for the for for uh, for, for, for uh, protect the individual? For this, uh, for this uh, nuclear uh, radiation. Thank you. 
Yes. Uh, to avoid the exposition to radiation, uh, for instance, for it depends on the situation. If you be in uh, inhalation, one should uh, make a good airing, okay, and diminish the exposure time, okay. Uh, for uh, for uh, food stocks, uh, you should clean. Uh, you should clean uh, your hand and clean food stocks, etc. Before eating meat, uh, we we advise we advise uh, the users about the effects of these ranges and we propose some solutions. Okay, uh, for the application. It is to avoid when you, uh, women, rural women, uh, use uh, olive oil to protect their skin. Uh, they should avoid uh, dust, uh, phosphate dust, etc. Uh, to avoid pollution, when you consume honey, you should uh, avoid to eat uh, polluted honey. And farmers should <coughs> place uh, their uh, beehives far from uh, factories, polluting factories. We give solutions to each problem. Okay? There is a solution. Okay? Uh, to, to, to get a natural uh, level, uh, since because the natural radioactivity existed since the creation of the Earth. The Earth. Uh, the universe, but we are on the earth. Okay? Yes. Uh, so, but uh, we didn't co cohabitate, uh, cohabitate with this radioactivity. But due to pollution, uh, the, the diversity of pollution, uh, this radioactivity uh, enhances, increases. Okay? To uh, stop uh, pollution, for instance, uh, in uh, cafe rooms, uh, people should avoid to smoke cigarettes because cigarette smoke uh, contain uh, more radon and contribute to attach the uh, radon and toron progenies on aerosols which are inhaled by, uh, by the consumers and which enhance the, radio, the, the dose. Okay? And for instance, uh, when you live in your home, you should uh, make a good airing. The ventilation should be uh, important, uh, okay, to avoid radon. Uh, radon, you cannot avoid radon. Uh, it exists everywhere. But uh, to uh, diminish, decrease its impact on the health, you should uh, uh, have a good ventilation. You should not uh, 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 close the, the door of your location of your home. Yes. Okay? Did I answer to your yes. question? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, teacher, for your interesting uh, presentation. Teacher, my question is, uh, why hospitals don't have uh, windows? Windows? Yes. So, about hospitals, we, uh, they have a window because we did an important research, there isn't here, uh, Professor Matran. Uh, we performed uh, the measurement of ray torn in different uh, hospitals, okay, in Marrakech, and they have uh, windows, okay, I don't know what do you mean, but there is no <laughs> they window. windows, they are closed windows, ah, why they close, yeah. but sometimes, huh, sometimes, but not uh, all time, no, <laughs> ah, they should uh, ventilate, uh, they should ventilate, uh, but uh, surely they uh, should avoid the air current, uh, do you understand, uh, to patients, they can make them uh, sick, okay, 
that they should open the, the, the doors, or the doors and the windows. Not only the windows, the doors. Okay. But we measured in all hospitals of uh, Marrakesh, and we found that uh, we advise uh, sometimes uh, people to open the doors and the windows and uh, to stay less time, less time. Okay, but uh, patients uh, uh, did not have the choice. Okay, but you should open the door and the windows. Okay, in your home you should open uh, from time to time. Uh, okay, but if it takes the uh, air current. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm from Japan, so in 2011 I have some experiences because, yeah, actually my background is library, but I have some empiric experiences using uh, boron in order to treatment uh, cancer, uh, lung cancer. So, BNCT, uh, this is the Kyoto University. On that time, I support the uh, team, so I make an animal model and then also it, uh, what is it set up the animal model to the reactor. So my question in this case, from your perspective, just want to explain about uh, thorium for lung cancer. So any kind of if we compare the boron BNCT with boron neutron capture therapy, compare with thorium. Uh, so any kind of this advantage or advantage, both of them. So I, I would like to know from your perspective. I don't know why the reason uh, there's a kind of project in, uh, in, in Kyoto University on the time using uh, BNCP. I just support the teams. Yeah, only that yeah. one. You use the boron yes. for, for detecting radon? No, no, therapy. For therapy, uh, for yes, therapy. Okay. Therefore, from your perspective, uh, I just want to know, uh, do you have some idea why? Uh, if it is applied to the patient. So because on that time also I was lucky. I saw uh, what is a patient uh, who has cancer and then treat with the boron also. So, <laughs> but yeah, in, in case of me, because uh, on that time also I work in Fuku University and this is not, host, uh, not a hospital university, so I use animal in this case. So the for the my question now, uh, if you compare boron and thorium, so from your perspective, uh, with us better uh, economically or maybe effectively. Mm. So, uh, uh, thank you very much. Okay, you want to. Uh, yes, cooperative. To boron and torrent. Tor 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 yeah, maybe torrent. Torrent, torrent, yeah. R N two to uh, twenty. To yeah. twenty. Just now I saw your presentation for lung cancer, maybe. So. Yeah, say uh, torrent. Torrent. Yeah. 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 Tor yes, but. Uh, uh, Boron, boron, uh, is it radioactive? Boron, no. Yeah, I think uh, because the, yeah, of course. And uh, uh, it emits what kind of uh, particles? Uh, in this case, we just treatment directly to the cancer. Yes, but uh, with uh, which kind? Beta plus, beta <coughs> minus, gamma, no? On the time before, I'm a biologist. In this ah, case, yes, I guess. Uh, Support I must me. know uh, what kind I of. If I know that uh, 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 the beta particles, uh, mm -hmm. we should establish the method to determine the dose received. I see. Okay? If uh, they uh, emit gamma dose, one should use another detector. It depends on the uh, radioactivity of the source. Because you use boron as a source. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So uh, in this case, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm sorry, I cannot explain about the about the part. Yes, it depends on the the the, the origin of radiation uh, the, or the type, the kind, the kind of radiation. If you tell me that this boron uh, uh, emit beta particles, I should uh, do. The, the study on beta, the low, the loss of energy of beta inside cells, human cell. If it emits uh, alpha particles, it's different because they are uh, huge particles. 
uh, with the ranges uh, smaller than beta particle. If it emits gamma particle uh, photons, uh, you should use an order formalism for gamma because gamma penetrates uh, so long. Okay, but I don't know yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Euh, aucune question. J'ai une petite question, mais en français. Je, 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 je sais pas. En tant que, en tant que praticien de, de radionucléides, on a appris que seulement les neutrons qui peuvent pénétrer la cornée, et non pas les particules alpha. Alors j'étais surpris parce qu'il il peut y avoir une inhalation de, de radon, de radon, de radon qui peut pénétrer même à, au cristal pour donner une cataracte. Ouais, ouais. Ça, Alors que ça, ça c'est un, euh, un peu plus que ce qu'on a appris. Donc, euh, donc même le, les particules alpha, ils peuvent pénétrer. Non, parce que le radon, une fois qu'il pénètre dans, dans, dans le, le, le cristal, il va euh, donc se désintégrer, vu sa longueur de diffusion, il va se désintégrer en limitant des alpha. Et alpha, c'est dangereux, puisque c'est des grosses particules. Ils vont donc verser leur énergie dans le cristallin et ils vont déformer as you, as you know, hein, oui. comme vous, vous le savez plus oui. que moi, hein, ils vont déformer donc les bords, c'est ce qu'on appelle cataract ou cataract. Ok, ça c'est une, donc le nom de le publier dans la revue euh, connue de, 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 de l'association américaine de, de physique, de la, Health Physics, American Health Physics Society. Donc, euh, donc nous l'avons publié. Donc, pour vous dire que dans cette université, <rire> ah oui, 2018, 2018, 2018 c'est récent. récent, et tout le dans les congrès les 2006, les ah non, que je ne suis pas médecin. Il faut actualiser les connaissances. Oui, donc les... là, c'est une, c'est ce qu'on appelle en anglais, finding, finding. finding. c'est une uh, trouvaille. Finding. Donc, uh, donc yeah. uh, ah, okay. on a montré, vu sa longueur de diffusion, puisque c'est un gaz, il peut pénétrer jusqu'à les heures vitrées. Oui, oui, oui. Yeah. Uh, ok, et surtout, ce qui nous intéresse, c'est le cristal. Yeah. Ça, c'est une première. C'est une première à l'université Kaderi. Ah oui, D'accord Là, donc, là, pour vous dire que donc, euh, les, nos, nos chercheurs au Maroc, et, donc, là, ils contribuent dans l'évolution de, de, de la science, dans les différents domaines. Parce que je vois, moi, les, les publications, vous voyez, donc, ce n'est pas question de... Vous voyez Donc, c'est question d'idées. Et nous avons... Oh, j'ai des idées. L'innovation, c'est l'idée. L'innovation, c'est l'idée. C'est l'idée. Oui, oui, oui. Pour éclaircir. L'innovation, c'est l'idée. Pour éclaircir. On ne ferme pas les windows, les fenêtres, mais on protège l'environnement des effets stochastiques. Monsieur Mistar, il a parlé. Donc, il faut garder le patient pendant 3-4 jours quand il prend l'iode 131, qui est émetteur bêta. Et euh, pour lui, il est irradié déjà, mais euh, pour l'environnement, il ne va pas contaminer l'entourage. Le, le C'est pour ça qu'on ferme la porte, il est enfermé 3-4 jours, et même les fenêtres, il est préconisé. Voilà. Mais vous avez une ventilation donc, Il y a une ventilation, il y a un flux laminaire, il y a des cuves de décroissance radioactive, il y a un flux, ouais, c'est des, des chambres spéciaux qui sont blindes, euh, qui sont protégées radio protégés et donc euh, ils sont dédiés à ces patients qui ont des cancers de la thyroïde et donc c'est des cas spéciaux, des cas particuliers. C'est bon
if you apply uh, the, the mark in black, so yes. are we more exposed to radiations or is it the, is it the, the contrary? You know, when you go to the Moroccan Hemen. traditional Hemen, Hemen. Yeah. Hemen. okay, uh, the people apply, apply yes. on their skin uh, during, uh, during the 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes uh, and uh, maybe one hour yes. uh, for women. Yeah. Okay, we did, we did uh, a study. Uh, this work was published in 2010. I have the article if you give me your email. I can send you all these references. Uh, we published, it was a doctorate uh, work. Uh, we published in uh, 2000, as, uh, as I said, uh, and 10. Okay, we did uh, a study uh, for different users, okay, and different kinds of black soaps. Uh, you get every, uh, uh, you, you change the, the speaker. Uh, if you can uh, return to mine just to, to show her. Uh, we, know uh, that. Uh, we will know that. Uh, kind of we study degree. different and different yeah. times, application time. Okay. Uh, in conclusion, to reduce the when you apply uh, the uh, black broken black soap on your skin, uh, it contains. You should before measure the quantity of uranium, thorium, and radon inside your black uh, soap uh, in uh, the laboratory. And after that, you when you apply it during. Uh, as uh, an exposure time, okay, uh, we can, due to our formalism, determine the dose received, okay? Yes, okay? This, uh, the Moroccan black soaps, uh, okay, uh, for 10 years, uh, 5 years, uh, etc., okay? Uh, and uh, here it was, I didn't. Uh, uh, mention, I didn't mention the time, uh, okay, but uh, to reduce the uh, radiation before determining the radiation dose, you should analyze the uranium thorium uh, concentrations inside your black soap, and then you put it during that time, 20 minutes or one hour. During that, uh, the uh, alpha, the uranium alpha particles emitted by uranium, uh, thorium, and their families, uh, bombarded, emit, uh, bombard your skin, and ca they can reach the epidermis, the basal layer of the epidermis. Okay? So to reduce the, these effects, you should, uh, uh, we studied the effect of pollution. It, uh, that means that we added to our black soap, and polluted, we added, for, for instance, uh, marble dust. Okay? Or uh, phosphate dust. Okay? And we measure, we find that pollution. Why we did that? Because in rural zones, they uh, uh, use uh, or they sell in some markets, rural markets, they sell uh, Moroccan black soap and uh, phosphates. Okay? Fertilizers. Uh, we saw that in uh, rural uh, markets, they uh, sell all that, okay? And they sell also uh, other uh, foodstuffs, okay? There is pollution. So to reduce the effect of uh, rock and black soap on the skin, you should uh, de decrease the uh, exposure time and uh, avoid or uh, evitate uh, pollution, the source of pollution, okay? It's a whole study we did in 2000 and, and we published it. I have this article. I can send, uh, send it to you uh, if you give me your email, okay? Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Professor, for this uh, rich and informative presentation. Just in this respect, you know, uh, uh, of uh, the black and soap, what's the, 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 the best time 
you know, uh, that you suggest, yeah, uh, or the best duration of time uh, that you suggest, and, I mean, uh, for, for, for that. It's not possible to, to say to a person, uh, in Hamam, you should, you should like, apply Sabun Bindi, during 20 or uh, 30, uh, just to advise them to evitate pollution and decrease the exposure. Or, or, or uh, stop it. <laughs> no, 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 it's better, it's better to use it. It's, uh, it's, uh, but the people use this uh, black soap uh, all over the world now. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, very, very important for cleaning the skin. Uh, okay. Did I answer your question? Uh, to some extent, yeah. Uh, uh, this question leads me to another one, which is, what are the side effects that can be, you know, uh, produced by a long uh, duration, uh, I mean... Of oh, any product, of yeah. yeah. any product. Yeah. But mainly Moroccan uh, black soul. Oh, only? But, but, but why not? We did a study with Dr. Metran on the application of, the dangerous application of, of medical drugs. Uh, in different, uh, in different speci medicine speciality, uh, uh, sometimes they use two minutes. Uh, I think in uh, some, uh, I have, I have the, the, the paper here, uh, two minutes application time. Uh, sometimes uh, one more, okay? It depends on the, uh, the prescription of the doctors. Okay, but for black soap, it depends on the capacity for people to stay for a long time in hot hanana, very hot, eh? and when the temperature uh, increases, uh, radon, uh, the emanation of radon increases. Okay, you should not stay in the, because uh, there are three rooms, the very hot and the medium, and, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, our professor, Sinikolai uh, Nisha, for your